Is it worth the upgrade to a MacBook Pro 2019? That's the big question. I would say no, it's actually not worth the upgrade. The reason for that is because... Welcome back to Andre and Sully with my chubby face and Andre's neck. Just kidding. <laughs> this has good lighting and stuff. This is my wife. <laughs> she likes attention as you can tell. Are you doing this? Here, so. No, I can't see it. Yeah, it's focused though. Okay. Anyway. Hey guys, sorry for my wife there. I just wanted to make a video about the MacBook Pro 2019. This is specifically for music production. So this is about if it's worth spending the money for a laptop that is gonna give you music production and video editing and that sort of thing. I'm coming from a background of a good laptop already. My other laptop is, is a good one. I've had it for four years now. So it's pretty good. It's not really a bad laptop at all. It does almost everything I need it to. For someone that is a student, for someone that just needs it for, you know, your Netflix and Word or Google Drive and email, that sort of thing, it really, it's more than enough. But for someone that is wanting to do music production, really high quality music production, or you want to edit uh, videos, like lots of videos, and that's the reason why I needed an upgrade, specifically for music production. This is going to be my perspective on that. I'm going to have little things so you can skip to different parts that are of interest for you. So you watch whatever you're interested in, because I don't like when other channels do that. You know, you have to watch the whole thing, but if you want specific things, you can just go ahead and do that. The type of Mac that I got was the one terabyte SSD, 32 gigabyte of RAM. Uh, it was the i9, so I don't think it was a turbo boost, it's just the original i9. You know, MacBooks, it's pretty expensive. My other laptop was 16 gigabytes, gigabytes? 16 gigabytes of uh, RAM and um, Intel Core i7. Oh yeah, one terabyte SSD too, so that's where I'm coming from. So in terms of the build, I would say that it is what you would expect from an Apple product. It's just a good build. I mean, it's portable, it's slim, doesn't weigh much for what it is, like a workhorse sort of laptop. It's really good. That's probably one of my favorite things about it. There's not much comparison with other laptops that are, you know, slim or whatever. It's just sleek. It just looks so nice. Uh, the portability of it, the weight for the power that you're getting, I think it's probably the best out there in terms of that. I'm no Apple fanboy at all, but I can tell that the quality of the build and the sleek and portability and just the way that it looks so nice, it just looks nicer and it's better, just looks more professional. Um, the other thing is there wasn't any problems with the stuff that I got. Everything just worked in terms of hardware. Like everything worked fine. There was no problems, you know, with this or that. I've gotten other gear sometimes that things just don't work right. Like the cable is doesn't plug in right. Some things like that don't quite work well, but there were no problems in terms of hardware, connections, power cords, anything like that. So that's another good thing. I also love that I can carry it around whenever I want to watch movies. I can go from work mode so I can be working on it and then I want to watch a movie with my wife. I just unplug it, unplug all my stuff and then I can just watch a movie with my wife. Prior to that I had my station set up with like really nice speakers and like another, a different monitor just so it would look nicer. But with this one, I don't really see the need for it. The sound is good enough, you know, to watch a movie on. And the screen is, is, you know, not big, but it's just nice to be able to plop open the laptop and be able to watch a movie. I like that. I really like that. The speakers are good enough, pleasant to watch a movie on. My other laptop, if you want to watch a movie on it with the speakers, you have to connect something else. Otherwise, like little noises here and there, you're just going to be distracted and you can't like focus on the movie. Even though they're not really like studio speakers at all, you know, their laptop speakers. Um, they do something with the software, or I'm not sure exactly what they do, but they make it sound like as if it has bass, which we all know there's no way it can actually have bass because they're so uh, little, you know, you can't fit like bass speakers on a laptop, but they make it sound like it has bass. So I'm sure they're doing some sort of software trick in there and it's working. I mean, it works. It's really pleasant. I really like it and my wife hasn't complained. I think she enjoys it too. So that's, I just love that I can carry it around, put it in different places, and that's another one of my favorite things. Of course, it's not professional sound at all. There's no, you can't like mix on it. Maybe you could do certain things, but not really. You can't really trust it for that. But they're just good for entertainment value. For entertainment, if you want to watch a movie, if you want to watch YouTube videos, you want to do whatever it is on it, play video games, the speakers are good. Better than any other laptop speakers I've heard. It just doesn't have that hiss and like that that most laptop speakers have. So that's something that I'm really, really, I really, really enjoy. And I think that most people actually would enjoy too. The battery just lasts longer too. 
Um, compared to my other laptop, if I'm working on my other laptop, it'll last like an hour and a half tops. And then I have to plug it in. If I'm watching a movie or an HD movie or something like that, same thing. I mean, it would last like two hours maybe on a full charge, then I have to plug it in. So sometimes I would have to like plug it in in the middle of a movie, especially when I'm working, when I'm doing audio production. I can't just like leave it unplugged. The battery will drain literally within 40 minutes of working on it. And, and if it's working hard, the battery is just drained. With this laptop, with the MacBook Pro, it just lasts so much longer. I can actually work on it for two hours. You know, I'm pushing the laptop. You can hear the fans going and it'll go for two hours. So I know that doesn't sound like much, but when you're really pushing the laptop, when you're going like, you know, putting tons of plugins, I'm the type that puts on like 50 plugins at a time, it still goes, you know? So obviously I like plugging it in while I'm working, but it's just nice to know that if I can, I have to unplug it, it will go on for at least two hours. So on average, it'll last about two or three hours longer. It just lasts considerably longer. That's a really good thing. The only issues that I've had with the battery are whenever you don't press the like button on this video, your computer just gets destroyed. So make sure you press the like button on there. Go ahead and tap it, tap it, bing, to help the YouTube algorithm show it to more people. So now on to something else, performance. In terms of performance, the laptop is really good. I've had no issues. I've tested it. I put a ton of plugins on it. It has not crashed, at least not crashed because of performance issues. That brings me to something else though. Performance wise, it's really good. Um, but I did have some problems and this is something to consider if you are a person that uses a lot of different software, different programs to edit videos or do music production, like Ableton, Pro Tools. Transferring over from something that works already to Catalina has been a nightmare. I mean, that has not been easy at all because the developers for all these programs like Ableton and, and Slade and Waves and all these different plugins that I use too, they just need to catch up to the updates that Apple has done with Catalina or whenever they do like any um, privacy sort of updates or anything like that. And it just, sometimes there's just, they haven't caught up yet. I ended up having to do so many workarounds and make sure you go like the back way and download this sort of thing. When I thought I was just gonna be able to plug and play, you know, cause you don't have to do ACO for all, which you have to do on Windows computers. I just thought it was gonna be more plug and play. I had to do so many updates and so many different things, read so many forums. So that is definitely something to consider because um, if you get maybe a, an older Mac, it makes sense that you wouldn't have to do all those updates. But if the Mac is already going to come with those updates, like Catalina, you're going to have to wait for developers to catch up to the Apple updates. And sometimes it could take six months. So that is something to consider for sure. On to another thing I don't really like. For people that do music production, this could really be a big problem. And that is the fan. When I push this laptop, because I've tried to push it, I've tried to see how far it'll go, and the fans on the laptop are just so loud. I mean, they are loud. I pushed the laptop, I put so many plugins in it. I probably had 25, maybe 35 um, plugins running, and I was doing 96 uh, kilohertz of sample rate. So it was, the laptop was working hard, you know? It was just having such a rough time. Um, no lags, no anything, you know, performance wise, it was working still, but the fans were just so loud. They were so loud that when I was recording with my wife, she literally had her headphones on and she said, what is that noise? So that is to me a big, big deal. Now it doesn't want to actually make the loud fan noise. Um, I have a lot of plugins running, probably about, probably more than 20. Um, and I'm recording on two tracks and it doesn't want to make the fan, it's, the fan is definitely loud I mean it's a little bit, you could hear it a little bit, but it's not really crazy loud the wife is loud though she's trying to make what the noise was actually doing um, but it's not happening anymore which is a good thing, I think, but I wanted to show you guys. You want to make sure you get under the threshold for where your laptop doesn't have to work that hard. Even when I push my other laptop, the fans just don't get as loud. I think that is a really big deal. I know that it's performance, so the more, you know, in order for it to keep working, it needs to cool down. So I understand that, but it's just, if my wife comments on it, you know it's noticeable. So make sure that you 
take that into consideration. Now, one good thing to say about the laptop or Apple in general is just the actual OS. Even though because of the update, some software like Keyscape and all the, you know, just a lot of music production software, they haven't caught up yet. The software itself, it's actually smooth. You know, I don't have problems with anything. The Touch ID thing is amazing for me. Just saves so much time. Overall, even though it has compatibility issues because of the updates that are so new, they have to scramble to upgrade really quickly these developers for all these different software companies. The actual experience on this MacBook Pro has been really seamless in terms of performance. That's just another good thing you should consider if you are thinking about getting this laptop for music production. It works. I'm using, like I said, the Apollo X4 as an interface and I have never heard a more pristine sound come from any of my recordings. There's no noise. I mean, really, there is zero noise aside from, you know, apartment noise. <laughs> But electronic noise, it just is so clean. That's probably more the interface than it is the laptop. But performance wise, it does work. You know, besides the fans and the updates for, for Apple and all that, Catalina, it's just seamless and it's just more powerful. So that is a really good thing. And I have an iPhone too, so connecting that and having all that, that's actually really fun for me to be able to hook everything up to my iPhone or have my, my wife on it. And I guess she has an iPhone too, so. That is nice. Like I said, I'm not an Apple fanboy, but that is a good thing for me. <laughs> oh, man, <it's> sorry. <laughs> but if you are a music producer, you're also looking to get really good quality stuff. And so the Apollo X4 for example, a really top of the line interface. It just doesn't work well with Windows. Even though they probably have products for Windows, they just don't have Windows people in mind. So that's one of the reasons why I switched to Apple. They make this stuff specifically for Mac users and I wanted to have the top of the line stuff. So when I make my recordings, it's just, you know, more pristine sound is as good as it can get, pretty much. So I think that's something to consider for sure. You know, latency issues, that's another big one. I mean, the latency on this is negligible. Negligible? How do you say that? Negligible? Anyways, um, that word, because of Thunderbolt 3. So getting Thunderbolt 3, I mean, I looked all over to get a PC with Thunderbolt 3 and it was just not happening. So that's another reason why I decided to switch because overall they're going to be thinking, well, how are Mac users going to do this? And then think, oh, okay, let's try to do a version that kind of is compatible with Windows. From the laptop that I had before that was already good enough for music recording, is it worth the upgrade to a MacBook Pro 2019? That's the big question. I would say no, it's actually not worth the upgrade. The reason for that is because my other laptop just worked well, you know, and there were some quirks and I had to work around things and I had to really do like work twice as hard to get half as good as it sound. Um, but for most people, I really don't think it's worth it. I mean, I, I, I don't see how getting this laptop is gonna make anything like that much better for the cost of it, especially because it costs so much money. I just don't see how it's worth the upgrade. Unless, and this is a big one, I should have said but, and this is a big but. But anyway, that moment is gone. If you make money from creating, from music production, or photography, videography, or whatever, then it is worth it. Because you're paying for quality, number one, and you're also paying for time. If it's if it's gonna take time off your back or it's gonna it's gonna make time for you, I'm not having to worry about compatibility issues and all these things crashing here and there and you losing some things. The quality that you get and the seamless experience you get with communicating with other machines, other software that is built specifically for the Mac, it would make sense to switch over to the MacBook Pro. From the perspective of coming from a Windows user to Mac, if you make money from it, then I think it is worth it. Otherwise, I really don't think it's worth the money. I would say just stick to something like that isn't as expensive, but is still really good. It's probably gonna be good enough, really. I mean, it's overkill for a lot of stuff. Make sure you let me know in the comments why you think this is a good buy or upgrade, or why you don't think this is a good buy or upgrade. It is a lot of money, but for some people it is worth it. Some people just don't like Apple. Let me know why you wouldn't specifically get it though. 
That way um, we can start a conversation and see if um, that helps other music producers or other creatives. Check out my music. My new album, From the Vault, is out now. You can check it out on Spotify. It's called From the Vault because I had these stored on a hard drive and the hard drive got burned and all I had left was some MP3s and WAV files and I was able to recover them, mix them, and now have them out for you guys so you can listen to. So if you just want to check out what I do and what type of music I do, go ahead and check that out on Spotify. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to watch these videos and I hope to see you next time.